the Housing Association used their local installer, their local window maker, Barnsdale, and went for a timber window, high performance double glazed, warm edge spaces, as you can see in there, with all of these uh, mullions and transoms planted on. So that's basically one unit that you're seeing there. Now they do look quite nice, I think, actually. So we've copied the, uh, the window design as was, whereas on the north side of the house we've just gone for modern large openings. So that's tilt and turn, inward opening. So this is a cavity wall built in the 70s. This is the extension out the back with a flat roof. Now, you can see here, I think, it's a block work, it's a closing brick. Now the cavity is in there and that's where the high performance PU foam has gone in. Now that, we're, in effect, is our air barrier. We're treating that as the air barrier. So really that foam has glued itself to the back face or the inner face of the outer brick leaf. Um, uh, so we've decided that the window in effect can be sealed for air tightness as they have in fact done here using Orcon. Sealed to that outer brick skin and the brick skin in turn we're trusting is sealed, glued to the PU foam. So that should do the job. That should do the job. And then the cavity foam extends up right at the top of the house and puther, in fact I saw this, has puthered out into the flat roof zone which then meets the foam that was put into the flat roof. So that should be an airtight junction. That seemed fairly convincing to me. Again we'll see when we have a pressure test. So that seemed that was quite a straightforward, quite a straightforward thing to do. The foaming, all the foaming seemed to have happened very quickly. We've been closing off all the various air vents and so on because we are uh, decided it was worth for this job putting in a small mechanical ventilation heat recovery unit. So we don't need countless room vents and so on. Some evidence of the foam coming out of the cavity there. This was the old back back wall of the of the cottage, which we think was a lot older than the 19th century front. So they're probably built on some ruined stone walls. So again, parging, base plastic coat taken right down taken down to the concrete slab. So our new concrete slab is the airtight layer. The concrete slab obviously doesn't go across that, that void there. Not where we've got internal wall insulation. Whereas where we've got external wall insulation, the slab needs to be airtight to the masonry wall. So what we're going to do is cut back this DPM tight to the edge of the concrete slab and then that void back to the stonework, the old rubble stonework, which has been cleaned up. It's going to be filled with Orcon to make that airtight all the way around the perimeter of that building. So again, that's a simple thing, fairly simple thing that we can do to stop air leakage all around the base there. I'm assured it does happen. It does come in there. So there's a good example where the slab at the corner obviously doesn't bond to the, it's got the DPM, damp proof membrane in the way. So that gap there will be filled with, with Orcon. So we end up with uh, basically that concrete, airtight concrete, to airtight Orcon, to airtight masonry. Okay.